Hi, I'm Karim Latouche and welcome to another Karim's Quest. Today I took the 2020 Suzuki Vitara up to Bowden Community where Ambassador Bet Eco Lodge is located. It's a lovely property, it has a wonderful history. Some of the history also involves the maroon. So I'm going to be talking to the proprietors and they're going to be teaching me about the ecosystem, the Rio Grande River that runs through it, the food, the vegetation, everything. It's going to be a fun episode, stay tuned. Travel through Jamaica with me, Karim Latouche, as I explore our rich landscape and creative personalities. Get to see some parts of Jamaica that you may not know or may have overlooked. Nowhere is too far, too muddy or too high. I'll be driving through the 14 parishes and talking to vendors and community members to get the true stories of the various places. This is Kareem's Quest. On this quest I wanted to go somewhere remote and a friend of mine told me about a place in Bowden community called Ambassabet Eco Lodge that to the best of my knowledge can only be accessed through Portland via a motor vehicle. For me the journey to Portland always begins at Temple Hall where driving along the mountainside the air gets thinner and the atmosphere is constantly moist. Sadly for some people this is where the sinuous corners begin and if you have motion sickness it is going to be a dreadful experience. The roads are also very narrow so you have to hug your corners. Next I was driving along the coastline of St. Mary and Portland where vendors line the streets with their produce like green banana, roast breadfruit and custard apple. I saw one vendor with the biggest and prettiest carrots I've ever seen. At first he won't give me the tourist price, so I had to talk him down. Eventually we settled on a reasonable price and then we started to talk a little bit about his district and then he started to tell me that these carrots I was getting were much smaller than the ones he had earlier in the day. To see more Kareem's Quest features and observe some of the beautiful places that are highlighted, look for Kareem's Quest on Instagram and Facebook where you can view different posts throughout the week. And to watch the latest videos and see extra behind the scenes content, go to YouTube and subscribe to Kareem's Quest. And while you're there, don't forget to comment, share and click the bell icon so you can know when all the new episodes are out. So you, you have character bigger than this? Yeah man, bigger than gone from morning. Bigger than gone from morning? Yeah. So what you specialize in? Yeah. Carrot. Carrot? How long have you been selling carrots? About 20 years. 20 years? Yeah man. Where you live? Um, right at Lane. Right down? Clovis Lane. Clovis Lane? Yeah. Okay then, so 20 years. Why you have been selling a carrot? Well, is it something that your father sell or, or your grandfather or does you learn how to do it? No, my father. It was, it was a carrot here. We stayed there and chatted again for a little bit and then I was off to William Street. At this point it was about 6 p.m. and the time was getting dark but luckily I saw my turn off. For about one hour and a half it was smooth sailing. Then I hit the parochial road which had no street lights. This was where the Suzuki Vitara was put to the test. Being a small SUV the vehicle was not built for conditions like these. To see the road properly, I had to turn on the fog lights because at this point I'm driving through bushes. But I must say, the 1.6 litre front wheel drive handled the pathway admirably. Luckily, the proprietor Lloyd met me halfway and we took the journey up to the property together. By the time we reached the property, I was exhausted. So I said to Lloyd, let's do the interview tomorrow by the river. To find all the Kareem's Quest content in one place, visit the website kareemsquest.com. You'll see colorful adventure stories, a lot of pictures of Jamaica's beautiful landscape, and articles that highlight the many unique things about Jamaica. It's all at kareemsquest.com. I had a lovely sleep last night just listening to the river and this is the river that I was hearing when I was sleeping never know necessarily I know I'm here with the managing director of Ambassador Bet. Lloyd, nice meeting you My Te pleasure man Tell me a little bit about the property so your grandfather's grave is on it 
Yes, in fact, my grandfather is where he always lived. So when he moved to Bowdenton, which is which is what this area is called. Bowden Pen. Bowden Pen. Mm -hmm. So when he moved here, um, he established a homestead exactly where the cabins are. Okay. And so when my grandfather passed away some years ago, his desire mm -hmm. was to come to the put a final place of rest in what he called paradise. Paradise. This was his paradise. So who are some of the persons who helped to develop those cottages? So the community. Yes. Um, my, my grandfather wanted, John Byfield, um, wanted to restore some life to this particular area. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother had a passion uh, for this type of activity. Um, she was trained in community development. And right. worked a little bit um, with the UNDP doing community development. And she saw where my grandfather's dream could be incorporated in some of the things that she learned mm -hmm. and so she decided to foster this philosophy of using the talent that existed in the, in the community, community in order to develop a facility from which everybody could win basically everybody could earn so when i see the name eco lodge beside ambassador right yes. what does that eco lodge mean well it is a community it is a development of ecology okay. in the context of tourism mm -hmm. so it's observing ecological practices sound ecological practices. tell me about ecological practices right we, we, we implement average person knowing of trees course. animals so it is sustaining trying to live in balance with nature okay so we do not contaminate water mm -hmm. we ensure that the water remains pure so although we extract water from the springs, mm -hmm. the method of extraction does not disturb the natural ecology, the natural balance. Okay. So we simply take water and drink it. When we extract things from the forest, we do not destroy the forest, nor destroy the natural balance in the forest. So if we remove a tree, we find a way of replacing that tree. If we remove forest cover, we find a way of creating another harmony that would sustain ecology. Okay. So hence tourism. So we practice tourism with the community in tow, mm -hmm. ensuring and understanding that the ecological balance is critical to the sustenance of life and to maintaining that tourism product. So how many cottages do you have at Ambassador? So there are six cottages, mm -hmm. um, but each of them have two rooms. Some have three. Okay. Um, and we split this. And in the two rooms, you can split, you can have like twin size beds and Absolutely. Two. So you can have two bunk beds, you can have a single bed, you can have a double bed, um, depending on the sort of configuration you want as a group mm -hmm. or even as a person. You may wish to have a double bed in a room or you may have two single beds in a room, as a case may be. Okay. You can have sleeping bags, you can have tents. When persons come here, who comes here? What do they do when they come here? So people like you come here. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's Adventurous. A, yes. It's a niche product mm -hmm. in as much as it's not necessarily what people do who, who travel. Um, but you have people who have special interests. One of the special interests is actually um, being with nature. It is going into, um, um, into the forest. Right. And as you know, you are sitting in a forest reserve. Yes. You are sitting, sitting actually in Jamaica's only um, world heritage site. Nestled right between the blue and Dranka mountains. And of course, our facility was developed long before it was so designated. So now we have a forest reserve, we're in the middle of it, and also a World Heritage Site. So there's a special responsibility on the part of our community in preserving both the forest reserve, mm -hmm. working with all the relevant agencies, and indeed the World Heritage Site. So JC, mm -hmm. the Forestry Department, um, the Ministry of Tourism, the Ministry of Agriculture, um, JCDT, all of these agencies have a special interest in ensuring that we work in harmony to develop methods of sustaining the environment, ecology, and also methods of livelihood for the people. How has this helped to boost in terms of the economical survival of the people in the community? It's critical. And in fact, um, we spoke earlier um, about how communities, some grow, some die. Right. So young people tend to gravitate towards the city. All the people stay here and they pass on. Right. And they transition. 
Now, how you sustain um, economic activity is something like this. You create a facility that utilizes the talent that exists. You train people as we've done. So we what are different trainings that persons get? Okay. To be tour guides is one. Yes. Mm -hmm. So in collaboration with some of the agencies we spoke about before, um, JSF and JCDT and so on, um, we have managed to have tour guides trained, um, people who deal with receptionists and customer service, housekeeping, chef, and a number of other activities having to do with the cabins. And as you would know, the trail guides would learn about the history of the trails, which is literally retracing the steps of our ancestors. Yes. And so all those trails that we now use are trails that were walked previously by Maroons, uh, because a lot of Maroons occupied this part of the country. Yeah, because um, Nani Town is yes. close by, More Town. More Town is mm -hmm. close by. And I have to tell you that um, my grandmother, is a direct descendant of a maroon. Yeah. Um, I would suspect almost everybody in this community, right, most, would have some lineage. Some, well, some people yes. came in from outside. Like okay. My grandfather. Oh, your who grandfather was, came in from yes, outside. Whose tomb is, is on the side. And so my mother, obviously, also a descendant of, of maroons. Um, we have a special interest, Lynette Wilkes. This is her dream. And we have a special interest. We're bought into that dream. And so I make Lynette proud. Well, I think we all have had over the years in terms of collaboration with the yeah. community. So the two young men you see that left here earlier, mm -hmm. they are part of a group which was formed, which is called Bowden Pen Farmers Association. Yes, and I so, saw that on the side. Yes, and so Bowden Pen Farmers Association and Ambassador have a close collaboration. And um, th this group was formed after Ambassador had been developed. Mm -hmm. And so working together, we've managed to, to forge a very effective partnership um, and Bowden Pen Family Association is actually a model um, organization for community, like for whole community can, can use the existing people from the community. Yes, because what persons want is that when they come to a place like this, they don't want to see an outsider tell them about the community. They True. want to see somebody who is from the community tell them about the community. I know you were talking about economic um, development. So, so the government of Jamaica mm -hmm. has also invested very heavily in community tourism. Yes, and, and part of that means bringing along young people, training young people, and having them learn about their environment and utilizing the, the facilities, the skills that they have mm -hmm. in order to make a living. So you have men who are craftsmen who in the district who use bamboo and wood to make carvings that they in turn sell to tourists, people who come here, but also they go further afield to, to sell their products. Yes, but all of it has to be done in a way that observes good ecological practices. I get you. So I am here, a couple of things that I'd want persons to know and I'd want you to tell persons to know. It's very cold up here, that's the first thing, right? The water that comes through the pipe comes uh, from the spring. Directly from the spring, it is natural spring water that is full of minerals derived from sand and, and, and stones. You have two kitchens, you have a traditional kitchen yes. and uh, a modern one. Yes. So persons who want to use the stove top can go. Yes. Persons who want to use them crank crank yes. can yes. move over <laughs> <Yes. laughs> to the next part, right? Yes, yes. And there's, there are a lot of foods on the on the property. So you can bring your own food yes. and you cook. But you guys also have a chef from the community if persons Absolutely. want. Absolutely. And she cooks. That's Beverly? No, that's Ooh. Barbara. Barbara. So Barbara. Barbara cooks traditional food, mm. she cooks vegetarian food, mm. she cooks vegan food, mm. and she cooks contemporary food. So she's actually very good. But I want to tell you something about food, which is another economic activity. So farmers derive a benefit from selling their produce to ambassador. Yes. Hunters derive a benefit from hunting wild hog and selling the wild hog meat which has become a favorite of many. Yes. People who grow chickens um, are able. People who hunt in the, in the river and catch janga yes. and buso. So you need to have some janga bu and buso soup plus crayfish. <laughs> All right, I'm going to have some soup later. <laughs> right? So you, you, you guys have done a phenomenal job in terms of helping the community. I love it. You guys can be, do you have a website? We do. Um, How do persons get to book? Because they really go to TripAdvisor. Oh, really? Yes, and you, um, you just enter Ambassador's cabins and all the details regarding Ambassador come up immediately. 
and you can book. Also, the, that site carries our information um, in terms of the name and the telephone numbers and those things. It, it also gives you options of packages that you can book through um, using the, the details which are, which are contained therein. But I also must tell you, um, we, are not, we are not carved in stone with our stuff. Because if you, if you call us and you say, we're well, flexible, look, we're flexible. All right. you know, so if you want a particular package designed to suit your particular needs, you're really you really accommodate. Of course, and we depart from what you might see and on the website. And persons must know, right? Because you never tell me this last night. After you turn off on the main road yes. on Portland, is that a liquor drive to get up here? Well, and, and, and that's a part of the attraction. Because we are not a, a main road facility. We're a facility nestled in the Blue Mountains. Based on the, the heart. Mm -hmm. So yes. this is Portland right here and this is the main road running and you turn off from the main road yes. and drive straight up. And you drive straight up into the hills. Where you are right now, there is absolutely no um, living people. People don't live up here. This is in the middle of Jamaica's most natural, beautiful region. Portland, it's lush, it's green, yes. the water is crystal clear, it's beautiful, it's pure. My brother, I can tell you, I regard this little spot as our little paradise, our gem. I, thank I you. want Jamaica and the rest of the world yeah. to enjoy it with us mm -hmm. as responsible as we do. All right, thank you very much, Lloyd. Welcome to the yes. After Lloyd and I finished chatting, I took a two hour drive to Nanny Falls in Moortown. First, I had to drive through communities like Comfort Castle and Ginger and there is no way you can drive fast on this pathway. Nonetheless, the communities are so beautiful you don't even want to do that. A lot of rivers run through the area so there are many bridges to cross. The character of the landscape is rich and unique as well. The men do a lot of farming while the women are washing by the river or serving in the shops. As for the senior citizens, you know old people like to do them sit down and them chat with each other. At one point I felt like I was lost because I was on a lonely stretch. However, I saw a farmer and he assured me I was on the right path. When I reached my destination, I met up with a guide named Kirk and he started to tell me a little bit about the community. Okay, so I am with Kirk and I'm in the community now of Moortown, which is Nanitown to people call it, right? Nanitown. Nanitown. Yeah. So Kirk, tell me a little bit about Nanitown. Clearly this was where the Windward Maroons stayed and, and, and um, occupied. Yes, yes, uh, here's the way the Maroons stay and occupy and uh, this town is a resting ground. So this town, when I had the valley mm -hmm. below, you have many spies on the top of it, mm -hmm. crown of it. So in time, they, they slay them, they, in time they fight war, mm -hmm. and somebody are coming, while the area so, is very natural, along in a, in a valley, mm -hmm. like for the Pakia State. Right. So you have spy all around it, so anybody in the district they can hook them, and they can go walk this, this, town, this road, yes. and go back and flee in the bush. Let me ask you something, are you as knowledgeable about Maroon town as you are about uh, where we're coming from, like Mid Ginger and Ginger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, Kayas are one of our district, second district. Okay, in Portland. They are going to reverse you at the first Nanny Town, mm -hmm. and here's the original Nanny Town. And, and the Colonel lives here Indian. as well, right? Yeah, Colonel lives here as well. In okay. Motor. Okay. But we just pass him yard and we, we don't see my yard, so we are going to the park mm -hmm. to see what naturally we can do. Okay, thank you. So unlike most of my days, I'm dressed in jeans today. I, I was not prepared to go into the water. It's coming down with a strong force and community members are enjoying it. I'm sitting on a rock just looking at everything, but it is lovely. As usual, it makes Jamaica so special. And perhaps I think this is the first falls I've seen with such a strong force. But nonetheless, to be here in person is just magical. Well friends, some good things must come to an end and unfortunately for me, this is the end of my visit at Ambassabet Eco Lodge. I learned a lot about the vegetation and about just the, how they preserve the ecosystem. I don't feel like I, I've done, I've spent enough time to give this place justice so I do feel like I have to come back because the history is so rich when you talk about Mills Bank and 
Bowden community and then there's another community that they told me about where World War One and World War Two persons who fought got land from uh, the British and they all died. So all that is left in that community is just really. So I really would want to even visit that community to see what it was like and so forth. And so I believe that you know I must have to come back and talk to some more people. So until the next one.